Hey everybody, Zeal Brothers here with another video. This one in response to our boy Will Smith acting a little bit crazy at the Oscars. So the story is, is that Chris Rock was telling a joke and he was making a joke and it was a reference to a lady being bald. And he made um, a reference about um, Jada Pinkett Smith and he said that basically she was balding so she would be perfect to play um, G.I. Jane too. And um, if you know anything about G.I. Jane, she's known to be a bald character. And so Will Smith took offense to this. So he storms up on the stage in the middle of the Oscars and he punches or slaps. It's hard to tell from the angle. Chris Rock. And then Chris Rock is just hit there and he said, Will Smith just smacked the S out of me, right? And then he, Will Smith goes back down and says, don't put my wife's name in your effing mouth. And he yells this twice. And Chris Rock is like, hey, man, this is just a joke about... Uh, you know, G.I. Jane, and he was like, nope, I'm not playing with that. So that's the story, and it has been all over the news. I know you've been seeing it, and a lot of people have been wondering um, who is at fault in this. And it's just a big problem because you got two black men here, two professionals, and it's really a bad look for the uh, black the black image. But let's just talk about it, and let's just look at it objectively. Because first, let's just uh, look at Chris Rock's perspective. Here he is, he's making a joke, and he's always made jokes at people's expense. And so when you look at Chris Rock, it's a lot to say about what his joke was, because the first question you gotta ask is, was his joke over the line? That's the first question. And you know, I'm always hesitant to make fun of somebody's wife. I just, that's just a low blow, right? When we was kids, we always used to make fun of somebody's mama, but we always knew that if you really did make fun of somebody's mama, like in their face, that would be a huge offense. And that's kind of why we like to play with that line because it was risque for us to do that. Um, but joking on somebody's wife or somebody's mama, especially while they there, that's really, you're playing with some lines there, right? So Chris Rock, he knew he was playing with some lines, but here's the thing. Hollywood has always had jokes like that at people's expense. And what you can do is just do a Google search and look at some of the jokes that have been made about, you know, Brad Pitt or some of the jokes that have been made about um, Leonardo DiCaprio. Leonardo DiCaprio is one of the most hit stars. And the reason is for that is because he loves dating 20 year olds, even though he's near 50 now. And people, for some reason, that really is causing a problem with a lot of people. They don't like the fact that he's dating these 20 year olds. And, um, you know, I know he didn't mind um, dating 20 year olds when he looked over and see what Will and Jada got going on. But that's the big problem. They always make fun of him. And, and in fact, a couple Oscars ago, they made a joke about how he uh, took a date to a movie that was so long by the time the movie was over. Um, he was no longer attracted to his date because the movie was three hours. And it was just basically a reference to how young he likes the girls to be. Um, but it's not that bad, right? He really just dates 20-year-old girls. Um, he's a 50-year-old guy. He got a lot of money. These 20-year-olds obviously want to be with him. Um, and so when you look at it from just a secular point of view, really, what's the problem? I mean, let's just face it. A lot of people, you guys in the world who are not saved, you guys are just having sexual relationships anyway with really no attachments. Here you got a 50-year-old guy. He's more attracted to 20-year-olds anyway. Um, he's just being honest with his desires, and a lot of people are not being honest with theirs. So he's just having a relationship with somebody that he finds attractive, and they find him attractive for whatever reason, and who really cares, right? So people make jokes about that at his expense all the time, and he just rolls with it. He never really says anything. They even uh, go so far as to kind of allude that he's a pedophile in some ways, um, and he just rolls with that. And when you look at jokes throughout the years, they have been lots of jokes at people's expenses, and that's really what the Oscars is about. Is it somewhat distasteful to make a joke about somebody in the room? It's really hard to say because it's been so much the setting for what that is, right? When you go to the Oscars and you sit in the crowd, you expect to be roasted. And so because that's the expectation, it kind of changes um, your, what, you're, what you should think about if a joke is suitable. You can't think about it as when you go to Thanksgiving dinner, would you make fun of somebody's wife? You got to think about it as this is a roast session. And in this roast session, we roasting everybody all the time. Anybody that's in that room could be a target. And because you know that that's the kind of event you're going to, that has to change your perspective on how offended you can be about Chris Rock's joke. Now, Chris Rock made a joke about Jada Pinkett Smith's hair and her losing her hair. And we know she has a health condition that's causing her to lose her hair. 
Is it a critical thing like she was going through cancer? She has chemo treatments. And so, um, you know, it will be offensive in that sense. No, right? It's not that serious of a condition, but it is a condition. He made fun of her. But, um, so if we want to rate his bad behavior, what we really need to say is that did he make a joke that was close to the line? It's really hard to say. Um, it's, it's close to the line, but it's not over the line, especially when you look at Hollywood events. Now let's look at Will Smith and his behavior. Um, and let's just talk a little bit about the history of Will Smith because I believe that this ties into what happened with Will Smith. What happened was if you looked over the last few years, you can't help but bump into all this news about Will and Jada Smith. Jada Smith done cheated on Will. He, she slept with some star that was like almost her son's age. And she just been doing all kind of dirt. She been disrespecting him in public several times. And he's been catering to her, simping to her. And for those of you who don't know what simping is, simping is when a man desires to be with a woman so badly that he's willing to be disrespected and looked at badly in order to stay with her. And lots of people have asked the question, why is Will Smith putting up with all this trash from Jada, right? All this slickness, all this attitude. Clearly, she is treating him as if he doesn't matter. His feelings don't matter, but he is treating her like her feelings do matter. And so when you look at the unequal treatment, but then you also look at the unequal attraction. So let's just look at Will Smith. The average lady still finds Will Smith to be very attractive. He's got a lot of money. He's very attractive. He's still a bigger star, right? So then compare him to Jada, right? Jada is not as big a star as he is. Jada is not as attractive to the opposite sex. She still is an attractive lady, but she's nowhere near as attractive as she was when she was younger. And she has not aged as well as Will Smith. She's never been as big a star as Will Smith has been. Right. She's never been as talented as Will Smith is. You got to think about Will Smith parlayed a musical career into an acting career. He has a TV show that people still watch to this day. He's got movies that are iconic. He's had roles that go from comedic to um, tragic. And he's had all these kind of roles throughout time. And for a long time, I can tell you the truth that I would say about 10 years ago, I had a lot of respect for Will Smith just because I just love seeing a black guy who handled himself in a non hood way who was successful. And I would look at movies like Hitch or I would look at other movies and I'll say, man, this is a guy's a great actor. He's a professional. He's got a marriage that seems to be working. He's got kids that seem to be attractive and successful. This is good. And he's even taking his kids along with him on his career to be successful and famous, too. So he's obviously doing something right. And there is a lot of good things to say about Will Smith. But here's the problem. He ain't as respected at home as he was in my eyes 10 years ago. And as more news came out, we start to hear that maybe they had an open relationship, even though him and Jada were married. And an open relationship, you know, that's kind of like, hey, we can have sex with other people if we want to kind of thing. And it didn't really make sense to me because here's for most people and most of you guys understand this. If you marry, what the heck is the point of an open relationship? An open relationship is dating. I don't, and I don't understand it, especially being a Christian man. I really don't understand the point of that. Right. If you're just going to go out there and have sex, you could just be a single man and do that. Right. But I, so I didn't get that. But I just heard about that and I really didn't have confirmation on that. But later on, we come to find out that Jada is does this interview where her and Will purposefully do this interview and let all their business out in the public. And part of their business is that um, Jada slept with like this somewhat untalented musician who was very young and she called it an entanglement. And the way that she described things, it just showed a lack of any accountability that she had. It showed a lack of respect that she had for Will. And throughout the interview, you could just see all this pain in Will's eyes, but he's staying there. He's trying to stay with the family. He's trying to stay committed. And, you know, as a, as a pastor, I, I commend that to an extent, right? I commend that to an extent, but I think all of this has led to, and if you can look online, there's been so much mockery of Will Smith over the time. And over the last couple of years, Will Smith's respect has hit an all time low. Even though he's this multi millionaire, even though he's a superstar, 
he is not that respected because we know he's not that respected at home. And so, in order to prove that he was still a man and that he is still the man who deserves respect in his house, when he heard that joke about Jada, he kind of got up in his feelings. And you kind of, if you look at that video, he makes this glance towards Jada, like trying to see how she offended she was. She was really offended by the joke. So then he gets up and he goes outrageous and he punches Chris Rock. And right there, he turns from being someone who could construe themselves to being the victim to somebody who is just so out of line. And why is he so out of line? Because he's trying to win this lady's respect whose respect he will never have. And there's a lesson in that for everybody, every man who is watching this video, because if a woman doesn't respect you, it doesn't matter. And a lot of black men, you guys will go out there and die. There are so many fights I've seen because a man is trying to impress this lady and he's trying to do anything he can to impress her. But listen, if you can't inherently in yourself without acting outside of yourself or your character impress her, you got to let her look or be alone. You got to leave her be. And I am not an advocate for divorce. But here's the thing. With Hollywood marriages, let's just talk about it. being for real. They're shams. And when you have this lack of respect in your home, you can't be a man. And if you can't be a man, you don't feel like yourself. And if you don't feel like yourself, you can't be successful. And if you can't feel like yourself and you can't be respected at home, other people are going to see that and they're going to disrespect you too. And for a man, his self-worth is built on the level of respect and honor that he has. And Will Smith doesn't have any, so his self-image is getting deteriorated. And men do crazy things when their self-respect is deteriorated, as we saw at the Oscars. And I've seen that so many different places. I've seen that even in the church. There's a pastor um, that I know of who is not respected in his home. His wife just don't respect him. And you can just tell the way that the conversations they have that she just doesn't. And what happens is, is that because she doesn't respect him, he will try to assert dominance in ways that are odd. If he has some kids, for example, he might yell at them. Or if he's somewhere else where he has authority over people, he kind of overdoes it. And the reason he's overcompensating it, right, is because the respect at home leads to this desire and this need to have more respect. In fact, that's why a lot of guys have affairs. Let's just be blunt about it. A lot of times when guys have affairs, it's not necessarily because they have this overwhelming sex drive that one woman can't handle. Because let's face it, most women can't handle one man's sex drive no matter what. So that's not the real reason. The real reason that most guys have affairs is because when they lack the respect at home, they try to get it somewhere else. And all of a sudden, somebody else is giving them respect or submission to them. And that submission could come in the form of something sexual. That submission could come in the form of just being thankful for something they gave or respect for their position at work or respect for their position in an organization or respect for their age or respect for their profession, whatever that might be. And that feels a need for them. And when you go out there without your needs being met, out in the world, you are prey for temptation. You always are. And so when a Will Smith goes out there and he has this need for respect, what does he do? He acts out in violence. No different than most of the youths in the ghetto who go out there fighting for respect because they don't get respect at home. They don't really even understand what it means to be a man that's respected because they don't have a father in the home. They got mom in the home and mom just badgers them. That's how mom parents most of these black youths. She badgers them. She bullies them. She belittles them. I can show you so many videos where moms are calling their sons out their name and their sons don't know how to respond because a lot of times ladies have better linguistic skills than men do. They just know how to speak circles around us guys. For a lot of you guys, you really don't have that skill like that. I'm blessed to be a public speaker. I'm blessed to have quick wit. I'm blessed to be a good debater. But all kind of guys don't have those skills. And most guys don't have that skills. 
Most guys won't have that skills. It doesn't matter how much you train, your lady will have more insight. And some ladies, they have insight into psychology, they have insight into understanding what hurts you. They could use it to build you, but they sometimes use it to hurt you because ultimately some ladies desire to have control and leadership in their relationship. And because they have the desire and leadership for the leadership, that creates in you this need to lead, this need to have respect, this need to have honor. And you go out in the world with unmet needs. No different than if you weren't having sex in a relationship, now you have a relationship without any respect and honor, and you go out there and you are prey. Satan is just waiting on you. You just a fat sheep out there. He just wary for you as you waddle out there into the world. And so a lot of guys, when they hear me say stuff about being respected in a home and asserting dominance at home, they think that I'm just talking like this red pill thing, or they think that I'm just kind of talking about this, you know, this facade that I really don't do at home. And I got to tell you, I don't go around bossing my wife around because honestly, that does not work in a monogamous relationship. There does have to be some give and take. There does have to be some negotiation. But at the end of the day, you as a man have to lead. You have to have respect. In fact, you have to demand respect. And you have to do it for your own moral need. Your own soul is at stake. Because when you're not respected, you go out there in the world with your psychological and spiritual needs unmet. unmet. And what happens when you do that is Satan is going to fill the gap. It's no different than when we don't talk to our kids about sex. Somebody going to teach them about sex. We don't talk to our kids about science. Somebody going to talk to your kids about science. You don't talk to your kids about relationships. Somebody is going to fill that gap. That gap is not just going to be a vacuum just because you don't want it to be filled. Somebody is going to fill it. Somebody is going to refill your respect gap. And it better be your wife. Or your friends. Or your church. If you're a single man. My point is, this respect for us men, it is needed because it can get a lot worse than just going out there and embarrassing yourself. I've seen dudes out there fighting for a woman's respect and she don't really care about any of them. I've seen women egg men into violent situations where they've gotten themselves killed over some respect. And a lot of people looking at it, they say, man, that's pathetic, but... If you understand somebody's psychological need, they, in their own little way, are fighting for their own survival. And their needs could be simply met by a healthy home life. So, if you're a man and you're in this kind of situation, um, I feel for you and I'm praying for you. But you have to do something to change it. you got to make some radical changes. And if you are with a woman and you are not married and she doesn't respect you or you have to work so hard to make her respect you, leave. Leave. It's not worth it. You have to have a faith-based mindset where you believe, an abundance mindset, where you believe God will bless you and you don't need her like that. If she's not going to respect you, you don't need her. Because ultimately, everything else she's given is not worth the headache. And ladies... Respect your men because your lack of respect is ultimately killing who they are and killing the person you're attracted to. Your desire, sometimes you have to fight your own desire. Your desire to dominate your man could create a situation where you actually do get what you want and you don't want it. You will find yourself in control and leadership and you will find yourself less and less attracted to your man to the point where you also are ripe for an affair. But hey. This is the Zill Brothers. Speak at us, right? So comment on the video. Subscribe to us. We're going to keep on putting out more videos. We're going to start putting out more and more content as the year goes on. Thank you.